What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we've got some more Digimon TCG rulings that we need to have a little bit of a look at. Yeah, I know the Digimon news has been coming really thick and fast lately with new cards and rulings and all of that good stuff. But you know the deal, ladies and gentlemen? Everything, and I mean everything you need to know about the Digimon TCG, whether it's new cards, whether it's rulings, whether it's news, whatever it is, you know it's going to be on this channel. So if you ain't subbed, might I kindly suggest you do so? We're starting off today with a ruling about the promo Greymon. During your turn, when this Digimon has Agamon in its evolution sources, it gains security attack plus one. So then the question becomes, well, hang on a second. In New Evolution, we had a card called Professor Agumon. Does it count? The answer is no. It does not count. Because it has to have Agumon in its evolution sources, not a Digimon with Agumon in its name. And that's very, very different. Professor Agumon ain't Agumon. It's Professor Agumon. It does not count. Now, gaining memory is an interesting one. We had a really nice tamer back in the starter decks, the blue tamer, that said at the beginning of your turn, you would gain a memory if your opponent had a Digimon with no evolution sources. Well, what happens in terms of timing if you've also got one of those tamers, let's just go for the Matashida again, that at the beginning of your turn, if you've got less than three memory, puts it to three. What's the deal? Because if the new evolution tamer goes first, you go to three, and then the starter tamer puts you up to four. But if the starter tamer goes first, you'll never go above three. And the answer is, and we've said this a few times before, it is your turn, it is your skills, and they activate at the same time, so you have the choice as to the order in which you apply them. Might I suggest applying the one from New Evolution first? So Hercules Kabuteremon then. A very, very nice card. One of, the, one of the big fancy green ones that came around in New Evolution. One that I'm quite a big fan of. And it says that after attacking twice per turn, limited, you may pay free memory and make this Digimon active. Well, how does this interact with Hammer Spark? So let's say for argument's sake, you're attacking and the security card that comes out is Hammer Spark. Now the security skill there will give an extra two memory. What if that makes it your opponent's turn? Can you still use your skill to make it active? Yes, because that is at the end of the attack, but it's still part of the attack. And we've seen the ruling before. If the memory gauge changes such that the other player gets their turn during an attack you have to finish resolving the attack and all parts of it before you actually move over to the turn you can make hercules kabutrimon active and then it becomes your opponent's turn cool now in new evolution we had a bunch of what people are generally referring to as memory borrowers that is to say digimon where you can gain free memory when you attack but at the end of the turn, you have to give that memory back to your opponent. You can get free memory now, but then at the end of your turn, you lose free memory. An example of this would be the Wergururumon from Blue in New Evolution. When you attack, you gain free memory. At the turn end, you lose free memory. Well, what happens if you do this and then pass the turn? I.e., do you pass and it just goes to your opponent having free memory, or do you pass, your opponent gets free memory, and then this puts them up to six. It puts them up to six. It would be a lovely little cheat if you could use this and then just pass the turn to stop your opponent getting it, but no. When you pass, your opponent starts their turn with free memory, and then the extra memory from the memory borrower is applied. Hey-ho. Nice simple question here. Do Pierce and Security Attack stack? Yes. Yes, they do. So, for instance, you can Pierce and then get extra Security Attacks. Pierce says that when you take out a resting Digimon, you then get to perform a Security Check. And Security Attack plus whatever says that you can get more than one Security Card taken away. 
when you attack security. So rather than just getting rid of one, you can get rid of multiples of them. Yes, you can use them together. Yes, they do stack. Jobs are good and ladies and gentlemen, jobs are good and So, I've had Hercules Kabuterimon and Kokuamon on the screen while I've been talking about this. Hercules Kabuterimon has piercing, and Kokuamon has security attack plus one. So you would pierce, take out a resting Digimon, and then you would get two security attacks. And you could keep going here. Nice! Now there is a question about whether skills are compulsory or not, we did do that in the last video so I don't want to repeat myself. Let's say you're performing two security checks. The first check reveals Hammer Spark, and that puts the memory to one on my opponent's side. I've got one memory, Hammer Spark comes out, gives two memory to my opponent, so it goes through zero, over to one, boom. Okay. Does my second check still happen? Yes. And this goes back to the ruling we said a minute ago. Even if the memory gauge goes over to your opponent's side in the middle of an attack, you finish resolving that attack in its entirety. That is to say, even if the first security check puts the memory gauge over to your opponent's side, you have to finish all of the parts of the attack, and that would include the extra security checks here. Okay. So let's say, for argument's sake, I've evolved from a Sunamon. That's the blue Digitimer we saw in the starter deck. When it battles an opponent's Digimon with no evolution sources, you gain an extra thousand power. As an inheritable skill, obviously, it's a level two. My Digimon with Sunamon attacked a Digimon and removed its last evolution source. Does my Digimon gain the power in the same attack. So let's say for argument's sake, sticking in the starter deck, we've got Garurumon here, or Gabumon, or both, that remove evolution sources when you attack. You remove the evolution source, do you then still get the plus 1000 in the same turn, or do you have to wait until another attack? The timing is your turn. So at any time the condition is fulfilled, you instantly get that boost. Remember that you can apply effects in whichever order you choose if it's on your turn and they all happen at the same time. So you choose to get rid of the evolution sources using Garurumon and Gabumon. And then Sunamon goes, oh, 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 now they've got a Digimon with no evolution sources. Would you like that extra 1000 power? Trick question. You've got to have it anyway. Tee hee hee. And incidentally, this would be an example of a mandatory skill. You get the extra 1,000 power. You don't get to choose whether you do or not. Cool. Now, in terms of names, let's be nice and clear. We're talking about Agamon and Professor Agamon having different names. So that means that if you're trying to rely on something that needs an Agamon, like the Greymon, for instance, it will not work gutted. But if we were to look at, say, Rena, the blue tamer from Ultimate Power, when played, you look at the top three cards of your deck, add a Digimon whose name contains V to your hand from them. So that could be Vmon, or it could be Vdramon, or you could keep going up the list. I'm not going to go through all of them. If it says name containing, then it doesn't have to have the exact same name, just the part of the name that is mentioned. If it says name, then unfortunately you do need to have the exact same name. And if you don't have the exact same name, unfortunately, whatever skill it is will not work, will not activate. Um, gutted, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen. Gutted. Now here is a really interesting ruling regarding piercing and that new keyword skill companion. So Granko Agamon, we said, has got piercing. That is, when you take out a resting Digimon, you then get to perform a security check as well. But we have seen Digimon in this set, like, for instance, Devamon, that have Vengeance or Companion. I've seen both of them being used as translations. It doesn't really matter. It means the same thing. And that is to say that if that Digimon is destroyed in battle, you take down the attacker with you. So how does this work with piercing? Do you get the security check? No. 
No, you do not get the security check. And the reason is that the security check happens after the attack is fully resolved. You take out the resting Digimon, resolve the attack, then you do the security check. The problem is, as you're resolving the attack, Vengeance or Companion, call it what you will, has taken down Granku Wagamon, and that means that there is nothing you can do here. There is no Digimon left to perform that security check. Gutted. Now, Tanamon comes along. That was one of the Digitama that we saw back in New Evolution. And Tanamon says that if one of your green Digimon evolved this turn, you get an extra 1,000 power. It doesn't even have to be green Digimon, just any Digimon whatsoever. We've said this before, but we'll say it again, and we'll probably say it many more times after this. In the raising area, you cannot use skills, and skills do not affect you. So if the only evolution that has happened is in the raising area, Tanamon's skill cannot have activated because the raising area doesn't count. So if the only Digimon evolved was in the raising area, Tanamon does not give you that 1,000 power boost. Sorry. So what happens... If you have got a Digimon with security attack, zero. And this can happen. Back in the starter decks, one of the option cards that we did see literally did exactly this. Fire Tornado was a very fun little card. It was a two cost that said, choose one of your opponent's Digimon. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, that Digimon gets security attack minus three. Can, if you have no security attack, can you still declare an attack against the opponent, even though you will not perform a security check because you got security at check zero? Yes. Yes, you can. You will not win the game even if your opponent's got no security. So, if your opponent's got no security and you've got security attack zero, you cannot win the game because you essentially have to perform a security check with no security and that is not what's happening here. But you may have skills that activate when you attack. You may be trying to get your opponent to activate a blocker, etc. That can all work, ladies and gentlemen. That can all work. How cool is that? Shout out to the lovely Jason Snowjacks for providing our translations. And as I always say in these ruling videos, rulings are really, really important. If you're going to be playing this game and watching this game and enjoying this game, you really do need to make sure that you understand these rules so we can be doing them nicely. And the good news in, ladies and gentlemen, that I am here to help. And I will keep being here as long as there are more rulings to be talked about or new cards or news. I want to know what you think about these rulings, so let me know in the comment section. Good ups, be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash PTCG radio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, all kinds of fun stuff. But by far the most important thing as always, Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.